am i audible yeah um so well, good morning everyone today i will be talking discussing mostly about the proteomics studies and how we can do uh, protein and peptide level uh, analysis to decode the proteome of a subject or a biological entity so i am closing my camera for now for a better bandwidth So first, I would like to introduce you to the topic of proteomics. So as uh, uh, Deep Sir had already talked about different omics techniques that are used to analyze and get an idea about the biological uh, significance or uh, biological uh, mysteries behind different diseases or uh, healthy states. Proteomics is one such topic, which is basically a large-scale study of proteins and biological systems, in which we study the all the proteins of either the entire organism or a system or a uh, any kind of sample in biological con uh, context. For example, it may be the proteome of a species, the proteome of a uh, organism, or the proteome of uh, or any particular organ or any specific disease and as you can see from the figure here proteome is one of the most complex uh, parts of uh, any organism to study just because of the presence of so many uh, dynamic factors for uh, for example there are post translation modifications taking place at protein level there is uh, differential splicing taking place which uh, which increases the abundance or the amount of data that is present at the protein level for any organism. First, I would like to discuss about uh, a little about the traditional method. So earlier uh, and even now, a lot of immunoblotting assays such as ELISA and Western blotting are used to study specific proteins or even multiple proteins, especially to find biomarkers in disease conditions. And also, gel-based techniques are used to separate proteins based on their molecular weight or their uh, pH. And based on that, we can select specific proteins and then study those. However, all these traditional methods are very labor-intensive and become very expensive as we go to the higher throughput part of the essay. And also, uh, especially the immunoblotting assays are antibody dependent, which restrict the amount of proteins we can study using these techniques. So MS-based proteomics was now introduced after uh, recently, I, I think it's been already uh, a little more than a decade, using which uh, we study the entire proteome of the subject. And it is a very high throughput a very sensitive technique which has become very popular in studying uh, the proteome, especially in case of finding the markers of a disease. And all these multiple proteins and their abundances can be studied simultaneously. So here I'm talking mostly about the expression proteomics and not about uh, structural proteomics. So we can study the expression of different proteins in a particular disease or any uh, difference between specific organisms. And I will be talking about how we can do this. So coming to mass spectrometry based proteomics. So uh, the first part of any technique is the sample preparation. So the different types of samples can be used here. So for example, we can use cell lines of specific cancers or body fluids such as serum or cerebrospinal fluid can be used or even specific tissues. For example, if we are studying lung cancer, the uh, lung tissue can be used as a sample. And the first uh, a common step is lysing the cell. Uh, it is not required for body fluids, but for all other types of samples, we first do cell lysis using a buffer such as urea. And after that, we isolate the uh, protein and all the protein and then we quantify that protein using techniques such as Bradford assay uh, and then 
all the proteins are purified and then are digested and these digested protein are then input into a liquid chromatographic column for separation and then subjected to uh, ionization because in a mass spectrometer we uh, use ions because the separation is based on and uh, the output is based on the mass to charge ratio and then they are input into the mass analyzer i'll be discussing more about these but let's first look upon the modern mass uh, spectrometer systems So there are different mass spectrometers available in the market, which are uh, used for various discovery and targeted mass spectrometric uh, experiments. I'll be discussing about the difference between two a little while later on. But the basic uh, function of a mass spectrometer in proteomics is to first create the ions from the analyte molecules, which are peptides. Then the ions are separated based on their charge. And then these are detected based on the difference in the mass to charge ratio. And then the selected fragment ions provide the structural as well as the abundance information in a MSMS system. So first coming to the ionization sources. So as I said that we need ions for a, a analyte to pass to a mass analyzer and to be detected. So first, uh, we convert here in proteomics to use peptides. So the peptides are first converted into ions using techniques such as electron reionization, in which a beam of electron is bombarded onto the samples, which causes uh, uh, the electron in the outer shells of the analyte to be pushed out and they uh, get positively charged. Similarly, there's another technique called MALDI, uh, which is matrix assisted laser desorption ionization. In this technique, the analyte is first absorbed into a matrix and then a laser beam is uh, bombarded onto this particular matrix which has our analyte molecule. And then due to the high intensity laser beam being uh, bombarded, the uh, particles, analyte particles, as well as the matrix ions become charged but only the analyte molecules are allowed to pass through this extraction grid into the mass spectrometer so these are the most popular ionization sources used and now these are coupled with different types of mass analyzers so i'll be talking about the most popularly used uh, mass analyzer so the first one is a uh, quadrupole so i would also like to point out here that in a mass or uh, like in proteomics, we use coupled mass analyzers. So we might not only use one mass analyzer because uh, it will give a very little information about the uh, proteins here. So we usually couple these mass analyzers to get more uh, sensitive and more uh, specific information about the intensities of the peptides and proteins. So a triple quadrupole is basically uh in which four electrodes are placed as you can see here in the diagram and an ac dc voltage is used in such a way that the uh electrodes which are you know in front of each other or opposite to each other uh, are having the same voltage and while the ones which are perpendicular to each other are opposingly charged so this creates an electric uh, field and the ions are then deflected from their path and based on the mass and the charge of that particular ion, it passes at different time points through the detector and this is how the ions are separated and we can detect the ions with high sensitivity and then uh, sufficiently acceptable mass accuracy. And uh, uh, this is usually used for uh, targeted proteomics in which we have you know, very slight, uh, a very specific mass range because it does not have that great mass accuracy. Then coming to the next type of mass analyzer, which is uh, time of flight, as you can get it from the name. 
so it in this particular analyzer the ions are charged ions are passed through a, a chamber which is having a constant electric field applied and this constant electric field make sure that all the ions have same kinetic energy but since the mass of these ions is differing even though they have the same uh, kinetic energy they uh, pass through the detector at different time points and uh, based on that they are separated so this uh, analyzer is also very highly sensitive and has very high mass accuracy and high resolution and is used for different targeted and discovery experiments coming to a final uh, mass analyzer uh, which is orbit trap or a form, uh, Fourier transform ion cyclotron in this particular uh, mass analyzer there is a cylindrical electrode present as you can see here and then along the axis there is one more uh, central axis electrode present and it creates an oscillating electric field so the ions revolve for uh, longer periods within, within this particular chamber and that's why this particular mass analyzer has one of the highest sensitivities and resolution and a very dynamic range because the ions get more time to stay in the analyzer so a better resolution can be achieved in separate, uh, separating and it's based on the Fourier transform principle so uh, it, it is usually used for discovery uh, experiments as we can have a very dynamic mass range for this particular mass analyzer. However, it is expensive and difficult to operate. Now, as I was saying that mass analyzers are not used individually. Instead, they are coupled with uh, uh, different, uh, first we have the liquid chromatographic column then they are coupled with the uh, different ionization sources and this uh, and these when coupled together when, uh, give us more sensitivity and more uh, higher mass accuracy when we are detecting peptide ions so a common example i have shown here is of a esi quadrupole ms top ms uh, mass spectrometer in which esi is coupled with a quadrupole which is further coupled with a uh, time of light mass analyzer or even a quadrupole quadrupole can be used so and also there is a collider in between a triple quadrupole which is basically three quadrupoles coupled in which the first acts as the ion separator for peptides in the second it acts as a collider in which uh, a usually a neutral gas is passed through and, and that neutral gas causes the peptide ions to further break into smaller fragments. And then these smaller fragments are passed through an, uh, uh, the third quadrupole, which further separates the ions based on the mass charge ratio. Also, there are different acquisition methods. So here I would like to talk about the data dependent and data independent acquisition. In data dependent acquisition, First, we have all these peptide ions. First, only one peptide precursor ion is selected in the uh, first MS and mass spec analyzer, usually based on high intensity. Then in the fragmentation chamber, this only this one particular ion is fragmented and then passed through uh, uh, the second mass spec, but not all the fragments are passed only one highly intense fragment is passed and then detected uh, and the spectra generated and this is done one by one then this is called multiple reaction monitoring then in uh, parallel reaction monitoring although a single precursor uh, ion is passed through the fragmentation all the fragments are allowed to pass through the second mass analyzer usually an orbit wrap and all the fragment ions are detected simultaneously and we get a uh, signal based on all the fragments then finally talking about data independent acquisition which is becoming popular nowadays in which multiple precursor ions are selected based on their uh, intensities and all of these are fragmented and all the fragments are then detected in the ms2 or the second mass analyzer these are the uh, data acquisition modes in which we can operate 
uh, mass spectrometer for proteomics analysis. Now we have you know, got all the data, but how does this data look? So uh, this is how you know a typical MS MS check, uh, spectra would look. So this I am at the top showing the MS one spectra. So as I was saying, you know the proteins are first digested into peptide into mass uh, before inputting into the schematic graphic column of a mass spectrometer. And these are the intact parent peptide ions. Now uh, you can see this is, this one is the most intense uh, peptide. So this will, if I am talking about the uh, MRMSA, this one would be selected, and this one will be further fragmented in a collider, and then it will uh, be divided into ions. Uh, so uh, just let me uh, tell you a little bit about B and Y ions. So as you know, uh, protein or a peptide has two terminals. One is the N terminal, which is the amine uh, side, and then the C terminal, which is uh, the carboxylic acid terminal. And uh, based on that, we get two types of ions. So the B ions are the N terminal ions, and the Y ions are the C terminal fragments. So basically, these are complementary. Uh, so if, uh, if you see this peptide, if it's fragmented from here, then FIV is complementary to this uh, GYD TQFR uh, peptide. And that's how you know y, uh, y and B terminal ions are needed because uh, at one point it will be fragmented from the N terminal side of the amino acid glycine, and at one point it will be fragmented from the uh, C terminal uh, side of the peptide. And that's how we, in the second mass analyzer, we get Y and B ion intensities. And then uh, this is the spectra of typical spectra of a peptide. And these are used to detect the peptides based on matching with libraries, which we will talk about further when we do the data analysis part. So as I am showing here, so for this is MS1 spectra where, you know, if you can see the molecular weight of the peptide, so peptide three is, 1806. So you can see here, this is the peak for a, a fragment of the peptide, which is highlighted here. And uh, these mass differences actually uh, in the MS2 spectra reveal the amino acid residue based on which the sequence of the peptide is detected. So uh, this is the like the direct uh, raw output from a mass spectrometer. But there are various softwares which are used to convert these spectra into uh, the corresponding peptide and then the protein intensities. So we will talk more about them when we come to the uh, data analysis at uh, the hands-on session part of this workshop. Now coming to discovery and targeted proteomics, as I was talking uh, that I'll be talking about this part later on. Now we understand the principles of mass spectrometer and how they can be used to uh, detect peptide and proteins and co correspondingly their abundances in any type of sample. So first is the discovery workflow in which the entire protein uh, component of the sample is extracted and all of them are then digested into peptides using uh, uh, enzymes such as trypsin. Then it is again followed by uh, passing through the chromatographic column ionization chamber, then a mass analyzer, and we obtain a spectra. Now, this spectra is matched with a library. So, there are uh, libraries which have been generated based on uh, experiments as well as some predictions, and these are matched. And based on this match between the spectra, a peptide is detected and then correspondingly the peptide uh, the protein to which that particular peptide belongs is also detected coming to the next type of workflow which is targeted workflow where only the proteins of interest are taken so for example if i am studying uh, meningioma only the Proteins say which are to be known to be biomarkers of uh, meningioma either through 
earlier experiments or have or have been predicted using some computational algorithm will be taken then only specific prototypic peptides so prototypic peptides here uh, are those which fly good in a master tumor so based on various experimental uh, loopholes and technical problems not all peptides are detected very good in a master tumor so only specific peptides which are known to fly good in a master tumor are taken and a uh, srm or mrm assay for those specific peptide is developed and then it is as i was saying a uh, quadrupole is most commonly used for uh, targeted experiments so triple quadrupole master tumor is passed and the trace of the peptide is generated and then the corresponding protein concentration is detected so here i would like to point out how important are peptides from mass spectrometric uh, point of view because especially in a targeted workflow peptides are being used to uh, you know for discovery of biomarkers so there can be peptide based biomarkers or proteins in which there are specific unique peptides which are you know found dysregulated in particular disease conditions so we can detect these directly using a uh, uh, targeted assay and it has been now uh, considered as a substitute for immunoblotting techniques such as western blot and it has become one of the most popular methods since uh, its uh, establishment in 2012 13 and the peptides form a really critical information in this particular uh, proteomics approach so uh, yeah so i was uh, this is how basically a crux of the how proteomics can be used for biomarker discovery or studying uh, the entire protein yeah yeah ma'am so as we are running later little on a schedule is it possible to like wrap up the part in uh, next 5 minutes yeah it, i'll just take two or three more minutes for the label quantification part so sure sure yeah okay thank you for the remainder uh yeah so i was talking about yeah the biomarker discovery using peptides so this is how we can say that peptides are an important part when we come to ms based proteomics and uh, you know we'll be knowing about uh, their importance uh, i have provided some study materials in the drive link which you can go especially this paper on targeted proteomics you can see in the drive link provided to you to get to know more about the targeted proteomics and these has the potential for clinical translation as well i would also uh, point out a little about label free and label quantification so uh, label free quantification is nothing but we take uh, sample a say sample a sample b and then we just uh, detect all the peptides and the here the information that we get that is the raw files uh, the raw files of raw files are nothing but uh, you know spectral information about different sample we'll get separate files for each sample so uh, but it's uh, the limitation here would be that uh, you know we have very uh, we have to obviously run multiple samples separately so there are labeled quantification techniques as well in which you know we can Say up to 16 samples can be quantified only uh, in one tube so and that's why we use uh, labeling techniques and one of them is isobaric labeling in which you know after the sample preparation we tag them with, with labels and then there is also metabolic labeling in which the uh, samples are basically uh, tagged using heavy and uh, light isotopes within the cell culture only so they are grown in different heavy and uh, uh, light isotope medium so that they incorporate only those uh, peptides in their protein and uh, then based on the heavy and light uh, you know isotope we can detect these separately 
so here uh, a little bit about the quantification using isobaric tag so i will be talk uh, take example of i track which is isobaric tag for relative and absolute quantification so it basically has one reporter in which is variable in mass then there is a balancer group to balance you know the variability of the mass because that a reporter in is not detected in ms1 it is detected in the second mass analyzer so the sample preparation is same only there is incubation with the different i track uh, regions for example and then those samples are combined and then there is no separation of the reporter ions at the liquid chromatographic or the ms1 spectrum only when we come to the ms2 spectra when the uh, balancer group is cleaved from the reporter ion so this is the balancer group so the balancer group is cleaved from the reporter ion so the, the mass of the reporter and the peptide uh, are then uh, generated uh, for a spectra and we can see here you know this based on the intensities of the reporter ion we can separate each sample so 114 uh, ion spectra will be uh, connected to you know sample say sample 1 so this is a four plex four plex means four samples Uh, have been combined together so this can be done for up to 16 samples using tmt pro which has been recently released now coming to label contribution using silac so it's called stable isotope labeling by amino acids in cell culture so basically a heavy light isotope medium and a heavy isotope medium is used so 14 n arginine is the lighter and 15 and arginine is the heavy medium and these are incorporated in the cells when they are develop uh, when they are uh, developing proteins and then uh, the similar after you know the samples are separated these uh, separately heavy and light ions can be detected in a mass analyzer and that way up to three samples can be taken at a time and it's usually used for you know allowing comparison between uh, two different experimental conditions for example here the inhibitor treated and the normal cell line a little bit about the application so i'll i think skip uh, this part but basically uh, as i think deepshar had already talked about this in the previous talk how we can use you know different reaction uh, targeted methods to for biomarker discovery and one of the portals developed by our lab which is uh, brain trot is having a segment called brain disease proteome map which gives you know the results of uh, various uh, ms based protein studies so uh, that's all there are uh, these are some of the challenges Ma majorly uh, we will be focusing on the data analysis challenges in the hands on session part so thank you for your attention i think i took a little more time than expected but uh, i think we can give 2 minutes for the uh, q 